G'day guys, how are you going? Ben Weston from Tackle World Rocky. Listen, last time I brought, I put a clip together for you on how to rig your Ikata live shrimps or your live cherubins with a stinger rig uh, for chasing bar and whatever species. Uh, now, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to put together another little short clip of just a, a, little, uh, a little way that I've rejinked a very popular and very useful lure that I've found for, uh, for chasing barra, both in impoundments and for inside water. Now, the lure that I'm talking about is the Zeric Flatshad. Zeric Flatshad, very good lure. Uh, I've caught barras on both the 7 inch profile and the 5 inch profile. Uh, it just depends on how they, they're feeding at the time and what's useful. But I thought, I've been thinking a little bit about how I can rig these flatshads in a better way to expose the jig head because obviously, opening the packet up, they come with a weedless style setup. Um, which is great if you're casting around structure um, like lilies and snags and stuff like that, uh, weed. But in this case, I'm not casting around structure, so the use for a weedless hook is not really there. And also, I find that it's, a, it's not a good a hook up rate um, because that hook sits nice and flush with the bottom of the lure. Uh, the hook up rate tender doesn't be there as well as what a, a hook that's protruding straight through the bait does. So I've had a bit of a look around and I've tried to find a way in which I can rig these things with a better jig head style. Now what I've come up with is if I've, uh, TT lures make a series of, of great jig heads and there's no doubt about um, I think they're the leader in, in, in jig head technology at the moment. Um, now they've come up with this Headhunter Extreme TT Warhead. Uh, that's it, the packet in it. Um, I'll give you a bit of a look at it. It's got more like a button head and the, in this case it's a 3.8, but most of the weight is set back into the actual, the headlock part of the jig head. So you're still getting a 3.8 jig head, but not as much in the nose of, of, of the jig head itself. So I'll grab these guys. Um, the hardest thing with the flat chab was when I found I was first using uh, the tournament um, jig heads, and they just weren't working. Uh, they kept, the nose kept slipping out. So I needed something that was going to hold the bait in without having to use glue and, and, and stuff like that, which can also ruin the plastic in your bait. So I'll come up with this. So I'll quickly show you. It's quite easy. Uh, obviously, there's a nice big hollow belly in the flat shed, which gives it its, uh, its action, a nice rolling action, which Barra love. So it's just a matter of there will be an existing hole there, but I like to go a little bit lower. So you're more into the, to the nose of the actual bait itself. And then it's straight through into the hollow section, I'll show you that, into the hollow section of that bait. So it's like that, like so. So it's like that. Push him down. Obviously that big barb in that jig head is what also helps lock it down. Um, and then it's just a matter of, of twisting, twisting that jig head around. Now the, it should already have an existing hole there from the old Weedless setup. Now, in this case, it's an 8 extra heavy um, hook setup. So, an 8 in the TT uh, wall head seems to do the trick. Now, the other thing I find with these Eric flat shades is they have a tendency to want to push up on your jig head. So, what I want to do is I want to leave that hook exposed as much as I can. So, there's a little uh, little product on the market called um, Bait Buttons. Um, you may be, may be aware of it, Bait Buttons. So what these guys are is obviously when plastic slide up and hook like that, you have the ability to put a bait button over the top of your, your hook so it'll keep that plastic down. So it comes in a little little cool dispenser like this and all it is is all your bait buttons are in the bottom of that. Tilt it forward and you can see a little white button appears there. And then it's just as simple as going like that straight over the top, barb straight through it and pull. That bait button sits there and then you just get it to the desired height. So there, probably a little bit less, there is where the hook will sit. So the hook's protruding nicely, so you'll get a better hook up. Um, and you've also got the bait button to allow that plastic not to move around up on top of your lure. Um, and you're forever adjusting it every time you retrieve the lure in. Now, one other quick one is hollow belly. So if you're finding that your hook up rate isn't as high as what it should be, you can also use the stinger rig that I showed you on the cherubins and the shrimps for this style of lure. Um, so any style of lure that has that hollow belly, 
um, you can use that, that ultra point fast patch clip and whatever treble you desire to, uh, to rig a stinger rig into it as well. So there's another heads up for you. So, you know, keep toying with your gear. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, every, every bite or every bump that you get, you want to convert into a fish. And when you do hook a fish, the last thing you want to do is jump it off or pull hooks on it. So, you know, keep jinking with your gear, keep thinking and keep, keep in the game. Radio, and obviously your hookup rate and your landing rate will hopefully increase with it. So, guys, thanks for uh, thanks for watching. Um, keep a heads up on on this this channel and on the the Tackle World page. I'll hopefully continually try to update it and sell some of the other guys and some of the little tips and techniques we do with some of their gear uh, to maximise our success. And uh, yeah, good fishing, tight lines, and see you later.